Welcome back to The Art of Safe Scumming. This is episode two, dealing with Slaanesh armies and how to use them. And in episode one, we went a little bit sideways because the AI did something particularly stupid in that it stacked a couple uh, armies near a settlement. And this is interesting because it provided an, an instance to show you something cheesy that I absolutely do advocate that you use with all factions, but particularly with Slanesh because it's fast. Well, I understand that not everybody likes to play that way. I'm a Skaven player, so cheating is kind of like the default, it, and it's very thematic. However, I understand that not everybody was going to gleam a lot of information from that. The other reason I wanted to keep that video was because it shows the perils of stacking armies like this right next to a settlement, particularly if this is a major settlement. It's not such a big deal if it's a minor settlement because it's going to be a field battle anyway, but in the instance of a major settlement battle or a, a province capital, uh, then you can you basically lose your defensive capabilities if you are going for defense. I'm an aggressive player. I must never defend anything, and you should always be the attacker. Usually when I'm doing a guide campaign like this, I create some backup files for the purposes of just trying different decisions out to see how they impact things downstream. And so what I did was actually go back, find a save file, and then bring it back up to where we are now, which is the exact same situation that we were in uh, when I did that initial turn. So we're going to just do the same battle, but we're going to do it a different way that's not quite as cheesy. So... Uh, first things first, what we're going to do is pin Alistar inside the settlement. You'll notice that we can reach the settlement with Nakari down here. And we have our Disciple Army there. So first things first, we're going to make sure that the main army does not get out of that settlement to reinforce. And you can see that we would have won that just outright. But we also have some fodder that we can use. Wipe it out. As you can see, we would easily win this battle. However, uh, this is a really good case study in how to use a an army that's not in the best health out there. It's not terrible. Uh, our reinforcements are obviously beat up. But their army is completely healthy. They have a phoenix in there. They've got lots of archers. And we've got essentially trash. Also, while we're waiting, don't forget that we're trying to push the channel over a thousand subscribers. So if you feel so inclined, it would help us reach that monetization goal. These videos just go farther if you're bringing something into the platform. If you feel so inclined, then you can always hit that unsubscribe button later after we meet the goal. And I thank you very much. So first off, what are our strengths? Our strengths are always going to be speed is Slanesh. We have some magic. Nakari is a magic user. We have numbers on our side but they have lots of ranged and we don't have very much armor they also have a, a legendary lord and a uh, flame spot flame pyre phoenix excuse me so open ground helps us in that we're going to have some reinforcements come in and we have a chariot and they're going to have a chariot but they have lots of range so we sort of want some of their army to be in an open space so we can hit it with the chariot but we also want a fair amount of their archers to be obstructed by the trees so that they can't do a whole lot of damage to us so what we're going to do is they've you can tell they sort of started lining up over here at least i think anyway they're probably right here we're going to put this wooded area as our uh, primary region that we want to fight in so what we're going to do is basically line up our guys here and we're gonna take them up over the hill so liner goes up there yeah their whole army is right there so we're gonna get Nakari to bring their army into this space because this is where we want to fight we want to obstruct their archers but we also want some open ground to be able to use our chariots flanking unit and we're just going to get enough to kind of aggro them. We don't need to do a, a ton of damage. But we just want to do enough to, to get their attention so they start following us around. And then we're going to move these reinforcements 
out for the purposes of delaying. I want them to commit. At the back? Oh, yeah. Let's do it all the way over there. I want them to commit to the fight. So as long as there's time left, you can always move it back if you if you want to uh, bring them in at a particular time. Almost there. All right, I think that's probably good. So we're gonna bring our main line in. We're gonna send our flankers around, and we're gonna restructure this a little bit. This didn't go quite as I thought it was going to. And we want to use any of these units that can do massive anti-infantry damage to harass the back line. And all this stuff, we're going to bring it into the back line as well. We're going to ignore the Phoenix for now, and we're basically just going to pin their cav. Yikes. Let their cav do whatever they want. We have them drastically outnumbered in this case, so... It's not really a concern. But interrupt the backline missiles with whatever we can. Where's our fiends? Okay, yeah, they're doing good. Onward. We are in agreement. And we'll use Nakari to uh Dis disrupt some back line as well. Once our reinforcements come in, we won't really need to concern ourselves quite as bad with that. Uh, you can see we have some marauders that made it through here. We can send them into the back line. Uh, these guys, we'll just let them take them on. We can actually send... Uh, what is this? Is this just a lost marauder? Oh no, he's part of that troop. Uh, we'll pin that and destroy it. And now we've disrupted this... Ooh, crap. More marauders that didn't get hit. We can uh, make sure that they will pursue. And we'll just run that off the battlefield. Ooh, crap. Didn't see that spear unit in there. It's bad. We need to retire this unit or it, it will start dying. Where are... Okay, these guys need to come out. And we'll bring these in. The Eternal Hunters! Yeah, we'll just, uh... Seal to our why, why can't I retreat that unit? Oh well. We'll just run it off the battlefield. No one faster. Yeah, so now we're just gonna take this, bring it in, and where are our chariots? So any of these units that are sort of hanging out in the open here, it's not a great example, but to use the chariot, we need to generate some space, and to do that, we'll just do that, and also, we want to kind of interrupt this cav, because it can do some damage. Where did our fiends end up? Okay. The enemy cav is what you want to worry about when it comes to your chariots. Hikari's kicking that thing's butt. Alright. So we don't want to use these guys. Let's put them here. And then we're going to use some of these chariots. Just as a showcase. You can charge into things like these spearmen with chariots. You just have to be careful about how you do it. So this guy's in melee. You gotta get your chariots out, you gotta cycle charge them. We also have some cab over here, so yeah, we're definitely gonna... We don't really care if we lose any marauders. Okay, so we've got an uphill situation. So we can charge the chariots into that unit. Get the chariots back out. We've got 
more chariots wherever they went. Yeah, get that out this way. Finding fresh souls. Glorious. We obviously have an overabundance of troops. This is a really good situation to charge into. Give me a chariot. Actually, that's got Cav in it, but it should be okay. This would be a good showcase because we have a Phoenix Garden there. Use these to run these down. And then right through, we'll use that to run that down. Akari got the Phoenix. Army losses. The cult thrives. Retreat. <laughs> Wasn't paying very good attention to my cultist there. Now why I've got you, let's talk about uh, taking out the Lord. Somebody mentioned in the comments of the last video, why don't you just take the Lord out the next turn? And why not damage him, leave him for the second fight? And the reason that you do that is it has to do with your post-battle loot. If you don't take out the Lord, then you receive less post-battle loot. And you'll never receive more post-battle loot on the second battle than you will on the first battle. So it's in your best interest to take out the Lord on the first battle so you get the most amount of loot. And then also, this is a legendary Lord, so you don't want them to gain experience. So you take them out so that they can gain experience. I understand that Alistar is level one here, but if you take him out and he is replaced, if this was uh, a battle that we couldn't finish or if this was the first battle and he does get replaced, it's gonna be a, a level one Lord. So that's what I'm gonna dub the reinforcement pincer move. And then the next episode, I'm going to play through this campaign and see if I can find a 1v1, perhaps a beat-up 1v1, to show you guys the tactics of using a, a straight-up field battle using uh, preferably not Nakari, because he does add a little bit of edge to it. But if we could just do this with a generic lore, that'd be cool. But I'll see what I get when I get it. As always, thank you for watching. We are trying to bring the channel over a thousand subscribers so that we can get the monetization tools so that we can push these videos out farther because we know they just go farther if they're if they're bringing uh, income into the platform. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you would feel so inclined, go over and hit that subscribe button and you can always unsubscribe later after we meet our goal. Thanks for joining us here at the Air of Safe Scum and we'll see you on the next one.